On day one, I spawned into a city as a baby cameraman. All around me was war as the skibbity toilets and the cameramen fought to the death. Wait, I don't have any weapons! I ran for my life as the haunting song in the skibbity toilets echoed through the battlefield. My people retaliated with weapons of their own, but there were too many. Just then, a massive jetpack skibbity toilet touched down and prepared to fight it out with the Titan cameraman. The toilet made the first move, charging at the cameraman for the first hit, but the Titan brought down his hammer to smash the skibbity's head. The skibbity growled and fired a barrage of rockets at the Titan cameraman. His steel plating took heavy hits, but he was built to last and retaliated with a giant laser from his chest. The laser scorched the skibbity toilet and bored a hole through the building behind them. The fight continued, and each side took to the rooftops, firing every Everything they had at one another. The cameraman got a few hits in with his massive riot hammer, but the toilet shot rocket after rocket at the Titan. The massive cameraman dodged left and right, but got hit for some heavy damage and was eventually grounded. Things were not looking good. To my horror, the strength of the giant toilet was too much. The Titan cameraman was defeated, and the jetpack skibbity toilet turned his sights on me. Ah! I thought I was done for, but a mysterious TV woman stepped in front of me. She turned on her screen, setting the massive toilet on fire. Her TV head then detached from her body and flew up to me. Run! Her head then flew towards the Titan toilet for a second attack. I did what she said and ran for my life. On day two, I was being pursued by the smaller skibbity toilets. I tried to throw them off my tail, but I turned a corner and got ambushed. They hit me with a painful attack, attaching some sort of device to my inventory. I punched the toilets away and kept moving, but now enemies were waiting for me around every corner. This thing must be a tracking device. I tried to throw the device out of my inventory, but it wouldn't budge. I was forced to keep running with it attached to me. I ran until I finally finally took cover inside of a facility. Unfortunately for me, the giant jetpack skibbity toilet broke through the wall with his army. They had tracked me here and I had nowhere to run. What am I gonna do? On my next day, I noticed something on the horizon. It was none other than Honkai Impact 3rd. You haven't heard of it? Well, it's an extraordinary next-gen 3D cross-platform anime action game available on iOS, Android, PC, Steam, and Epic. Offering open-world exploration, immersive stories, and stunning 3D effects and stigma weapon tactics, the game provides a plethora of engaging gameplay options, from mini-games to expansive open-world adventures. Best of all, there's a brand new update, version 6.8, packed with twists and turns. The main story reaches chapter 38, where the black and white worlds collide, unraveling mysteries surrounding the abyssful Saw and the disappearance of Vita. The fate of Velonia and Saul hangs in the balance, introducing Zeal's new S-rank Hersher battlesuit, the Hersher of Rebirth. As a Psy-type physical DMG dealer, she fights alongside powerful summons, boasting two forms, Soul Shaper and Life Binder. Join Before the Endless Dream Ends, the thrilling card battle summer event. Defeat enemies with a random deck of skillful cards, strategically place them, and merge for ultimate power. Experience turn-based battles with unique factions and characters. Are you ready to conquer this epic challenge? Don't miss out! Download Honkai Impact 3rd now and use the redeem code REBIRTH for exclusive rewards. New players will be treated to even more bonus in-game content, providing endless hours of exploration and excitement. Are you ready to embark on this captivating adventure? Let's go, captains! Thanks Honkai Impact 3rd for sponsoring the video. On day three, the army was inching closer and closer towards me, but I spotted a strange device out of the corner of my eye. I rushed towards it and snatched it to find that it was an electromagnetic laser gun. I locked it onto the enemies and fired like crazy. The smaller toilet started falling to the weapon, but the giant skibbity was completely unfazed. Your life ends here, pathetic camera. I knew this was the end until the TV woman from before returned to my aid. Hold on tight. She managed to teleport us out just as a massive jetpack toilet fired lasers from his eyes down onto us. We had then arrived inside of a TV secret base. Did we lose them? I could hear the skibbity song progressively getting louder and louder. They were still on our tail. Don't tell me they put a tracker on you. Oops. The wall of the base exploded as the toilet army flooded inside. On days four through six, the TV base was being invaded by skibbity toilets. Led by the jetpack skibbity toilet, the toilet army belted out their song loud and clear. They zapped all the TVs down one by one. The TV men tried to retaliate with their own attacks, but they were losing the battle. I knew this was all my fault. Bring out the secret weapon. 
Just then, the TV Titan touched down onto the battlefield and began approaching the jetpack skibbity toilet. The Titan hit him with a left and right hook to the face, only angering the toilet even further. He retaliated with a headbutt, knocking the TV Titan's head back off his shoulders. The two Titans began duking it out, showing their immense power with hand-to-hand -hand combat and deadly explosives. The TV Titan used his speakers to blast explosive rays at the jetpack toilet, knocking it backwards, but he wasn't through yet. The jetpack toilet retaliated with massive incendiary rocket launcher blasts, setting the TV Titan ablaze. The Titan shook off the flames and kept fighting for the sake of the base, but was starting to look exhausted. Every single attack that didn't land or was deflected caused a ton of collateral damage to the surrounding base. His fists dealt massive damage to the skibbity toilet, but it still seemed unfazed. The toilet's barrage of rockets seemed never-ending as he fired upon the Titan with a limitless number of rockets. Back and forth, back and forth, the two Titans continuously slammed into each other in an all-out brawl. Despite the power of the TV Titan, the toilet army and the jetpack Skibbity toilet were still too much to handle. The TV Titan was defeated. Retreat! All of the TV men ran for their lives around me as the Skibbity army closed in. I tried to run, but the jetpack Skibbity toilet took to the skies and fired a powerful laser attack that vaporized the ground. We all fell into the pit below us. On days 7 through 9, I woke up in an underground room with only a few hearts remaining from the fall. All around me were my TV allies, defeated from the horrific battle. This is all my fault. To my surprise, the TV woman ran up to me in a frenzy. Get awake! Hurry! They're going to come for us! I followed the TV woman and hid as more toilets arrived to look for stragglers. They were getting closer and closer to our hiding spot, and I knew that we wouldn't last long. They're gonna find us! They can track me still! Hold still. The TV woman's screen lit up, and she managed to scramble the tracking device's signal. He went this way. The toilets all headed off in a direction to follow the new signal. That won't last forever. Come on, hurry. The two of us made a run for it, but during the excitement, I accidentally bumped into a random bell, making a lot of noise. Why is there a bell here? There they are. Get them. The skibbity toilets turned back towards us, and we continued to run as fast as our legs could carry us. On days 10 through 11, the TV woman and I were being chased by the skibbity toilets. I didn't think I could run much more until we ran up to a giant vault door. This way. The TV woman activated a switch and the vault door began opening before our very eyes. The latches to the vault depressurized and lifted the heavy disc from the floor, revealing our escape. When we saw an opportunity, we ran inside and locked the door behind us. I looked around and realized we are now inside of a secret underground laboratory. All around us were TVs building different kinds of weapons to fight in the war. This place is amazing. Thanks. But even with this tech, we're still losing the war. Skibbity toilets are too powerful to defeat. I'd love to serve your cause. Well, we have been working on a way to make cameramen stronger, but it's a dangerous procedure. Suddenly, my tracking device began to beat wildly. They locked onto you. Leave now! On days 12 through 15, the TV woman forced me through a vent in the underground lab. When I emerged on the other side, I found myself in a storage room full of plungers. I didn't have a moment to rest, though, as the skibbity toilet forces fell from the ceiling to ambush me. There's nowhere to run. Your journey ends here. I quickly grabbed a plunger off the ground to defend myself from the incoming toilet forces. The skibbity toilets attacked me from all directions with their crushing numbers. I jumped out from the plunger room to give myself some space to attack the toilets. Luckily for me, I was armed with a few weapons of my own. I alternated between my plunger sword and gun to break through the onslaught of toilets after me. The weapons were pretty effective, and I managed to take a few out until the jetpack skibbity toilet arrived. Uh-oh. I continued fighting with everything I had, but with the jetpack skibbity toilet helping out, I was left with only half a heart. The giant toilet charged his final attack, ready to land the finishing blow. On days 16 through 18, I was about to be hit with a fatal laser attack when the TV woman popped out of nowhere. Leave my friend alone! Max, catch! The TV woman tossed over a mysterious upgrade. I grabbed it and suddenly my body began to change. I grew in size and my camera head transformed into a higher grade cinema camera. I was now a large cameraman with 10 hearts. Time to put this new power to use. I dual wielded two plungers and ran into battle. Toilets began to fall one by one to my flurry of attacks. I was able to deal a lot of damage now. I slashed into the horde with my dual plungers, knocking them back and doing heavy damage with my new strength. 
The horde surrounded me, but they were no match for my spinning plunger attack as I put all the combat knowledge that the upgrade gave me to the test. I made sure to avoid incoming rocket fire from the jetpack skibbity, dodging and rolling out of the way just in time. I helped the TV woman flush the rest of the enemies she had swarming her, and then began to set my sights on the jetpack skibbity toilet. He was a powerful foe, and his laser eyes would melt through my skin for loads of damage. I dodged and weaved past his devastating explosive attacks, taking cover behind the nearby rocks while returning fire, but the jetpack skibbity blew my cover to pieces. The TV woman kept unleashing her blazing hot TV ability onto the jetpack skibbity, forcing him to dodge and stay on edge. In a fit of rage, the jetpack skibbity launched a fury of explosives that destroyed a nearby helicopter, ensuring that we wouldn't escape this fight easily. Finally, I shot my electromatic laser gun, hitting him with a direct blast and forcing the flying nightmare to come crashing to the ground. I stayed on high alert and beat him down with my plungers when he hit the floor. As his armor weakened, we both took the opportunity and beat down the Titan, weakening him severely. It was anyone's game, but I managed to strike down the jetpack skibbity toilet and defeat him once and for all. That was some impressive fighting. Welcome to the resistance. Suddenly, a flying saw blade skibbity toilet zoomed by in the sky. I was too weak right now to take them on, so we retreated back into the TV lab. On days 19 through 21, the TV woman and I regrouped at the laboratory. Unfortunately, your tracking device is compromising the lab, so you'll have to make your own base. Can't you just remove the tracker? Oh, I'm not qualified to. If I tried, I could accidentally kill you. Then I'll just have to stay on my toes. The TV woman handed me a walkie-talkie to stay in contact, and I set off to find a more secure location for my base. Once I found a good spot, I got to work on building my very own base. I made it shaped like a giant camera so I could have the best security possible. Next, I built a room to call my own, complete with a bed and chest to hold my stuff. Finally, I added a camera room full of monitors so I could watch the feed my base was broadcasting live. Hopefully this will protect me from the skibbity toilets. Suddenly, I spotted movement on one of the screens. I armed myself and rushed outside only to find it was the TV woman setting up equipment. I was about to ask what she was doing when I spotted a horde of skibbity toilets coming towards me in the distance. They found me already? Hang on, watch this. The TV woman powered on her device and the toilets turned the other way. She had set up a signal jammer to protect my home from the tracking device. This will help throw them off while you're here, but everywhere else is dangerous. Be on high alert. Just then, alarms begin to blare in the distance. The needs us. Come quick! On days 22 through 24, we arrived at the source of the sirens to find the sawblade skibbity toilet flying wildly around the city. An army of speakermen and TV men led by the Titan speakerman fired their weapons at the massive flying toilet, but he was able to mow them down like nothing. I tried to help out with my laser gun, but the speed of this foe was unbelievable. I couldn't land a single hit. Calling reinforcements. The TV woman's distress call brought more TV allies into the fray. The Titan speaker man became enraged and unleashed his laser cannon attack onto the battlefield, beating the smaller skibbity toilets into submission. He turned his attention to the sawblade skibbity toilet and the two began to fight it out. The sawblade toilet sliced through the air and whizzed past the speaker man at blinding speeds, wheeling back and forth to cut deep into his electronics. The Titan attempted to shoot the sawblade skibbity down and got a few hits in, but his engines kept pushing him faster and faster. The Titan's speed was nothing compared to the toilet adversary, but his strength and endurance was giving him the upper hand, allowing him to withstand even the deadliest blows. The Titan speaker man seemed to be making leeway. I thought we might actually stand a chance until I spotted a mini spider toilet run by. The mini toilet latched onto the Titan speaker man and he stopped in his tracks. I don't like the looks of that. The Titan speaker man turned towards our own men and began to unleash his attacks on us. The skibbity toilets had gained control over his mind. I quickly ran behind some rubble for cover. On days 25 through 26, we were under attack by our very own Titan speaker man. He blasted his way through our forces effortlessly. He was our winning condition, and now we were left defenseless. Without a Titan to help, we don't stand a chance. Everyone, run! We were all forced to retreat from the battlefield when I realized my tracking device would still give everyone away. Go to the base. I'm going to lure them away from you guys. I parted ways with the resistance and tried to distract the enemy forces. It wasn't long before the Titan speaker man was already on my tail. I gotta take cover. I found a body of water and jumped in. The Titan speaker man tried to blast me away with sonic booms, but I held on for dear life. Eventually, he gave up and flew away. 
I better make sure the others are okay. On days 27 through 29, I returned to the TV lab to find that all the resistant forces had returned safely. <gasps> Max, you're alive! You're Come with me, I need to show you something. The TV woman took me into another room where dangerous experiments were being performed. Cameramen were enduring different tests and some even died in the process. What is all of this? We found a way to empower an average cameraman into a Titan, but the procedure is incredibly dangerous. Nobody will volunteer. Would you be willing to do it? If that's the only way to win this war, then I'm in. I knew I could count on you. But before you do the upgrade, I need something though. The TV woman handed me a map to a skibbity toilet base. The final part needed for the experiment was there and she wanted me to retrieve it. Mission accepted. On days 30 through 33, I arrived at the skibbity toilet base on the map. It was a train station they had repurposed for their skibbity deeds. There were toilets crawling around everywhere, so I had to be discreet. Here goes nothing. I stealthed through the halls of the facility, narrowly avoiding the eyes of the skibbity toilet guards that lurked them. It seemed endless, but I knew I had to be getting closer to the part I sought after. Eventually, I found a way underground. I arrived at a room where loads of cameramen were trapped in cages. I kept myself hidden as the skibbity toilet walked up to one of his test subjects. Don't worry, this will only hurt a lot. The toilet zapped the cameraman, killing him in a single blow. No! I couldn't bear to watch this any longer. I jumped out of my hiding spot to intervene. On days 34 through 36, I ambushed the skibbity toilet only for him to evade my attack. How did you know I was there? You fool, I can track you, remember? The toilet called in for backup and the room filled with enemies. I had been set up. I leapt in the horde of porcelain abominations, plungers swinging wildly. The sheer number of them surrounded me in an instant, their terrifying song ringing in my ears. I swung my plungers expertly, swatting them away one by one, but there were too many to keep them at bay, and my health started dwindling. With a few big swings, I broke away from the pack and took out my laser guns, shooting them down one by one. Slowly, the massive force of skibbity toilets surrounded me once again, and the brawl continued. I gave it everything I had, but their numbers were too great. I was about to give up hope when a large TV man entered the room. Leave him alone! His screens lit up in a bright white light and held the army of toilets at bay temporarily. Get the upgrade part! Hurry! While the large TV held back my foes, I ran deeper into the facility in search of what I came for. On days 37 through 40, I entered another room where I found the upgrade part that the TV woman had requested. Now's my chance! I ran in and snatched up the part, only for the alarms to get set off. The lights flashed red and the noise echoed through the entire facility. Soon after, the skibbity toilets rushed inside. The complex layout of the building proved difficult to traverse as I attempted to evade the unrelenting horde of toilets chasing after me. I climbed up and down ladders, sprung from platform to platform, and narrowly leapt over the razor-sharp blades of the helicopters. However, the toilets' numbers were too vast. There was no escaping the wave of enemies before me. I rapidly pulled the trigger of my laser gun, unleashing a rapid burst of scintillating lasers from its chamber. But there was no quelling the resilient foes. I was surrounded, and I knew that I would have to face the swarm head on. I firmly gripped my dual plungers in both palms and began slicing through the toilet adversaries as best I could. But my efforts proved to be in vain, as there were still too many of them. Their numerous forces were beginning to overwhelm me. I had no choice but to retreat into another room. The toilets, proving their fierce determination, chased me even still, all the way into the hall where I became completely surrounded. The toilets hit me until I was left at low health. I needed a better way to defend myself. Just then, I spotted a riot shield on the floor. I picked it up and pushed their forces back, giving myself more room to breathe. Stay back, you toilet fiends! Thanks to the help of my shield, I narrowly escaped the facility and reported back to the TV lab with my prize. Your mission was a success. It's time to commence the upgrade. Prepare yourself. On days 41 through 43, I was strapped to a table and being experimented on by a group of TV men. <laughs> that tickles! Wait, ow! The procedure was dwindling my health down bit by bit. After a while, my health was getting low and I started to worry this might kill me. Ah! Wait, stop! Just as I was about to die, my body began to transform. I burst out of my restraints, becoming a Titan cameraman with 20 hearts and new epic laser powers. The experiment was a success! I can tell! Suddenly, my walkie-talkie went off. Sounds like the Titan Speaker Man is close by. I'm on it. I immediately rushed into the fray to confront the Titan Speaker Man and found him approaching our territory. Speaker Man, I'll give you one last chance to snap out of it. Skibbity boop up this. All right, then you leave me no choice. Without another word, our battle of epic proportions began. We charged in, 
two titans clashing against each other's massive frames. The city below stood no chance against our colossal size, our immense feet crushing everything beneath their weight as our fight raged on. A tremendously loud boom erupted from the foe's giant speakers, emitting a frequency so great that its sheer volume dealt massive damage to me. Flames littered the streets, scorching everything nearby. We couldn't stay at this destructive impasse forever. I needed to come up with something that could damage the gargantuan foe. I wielded my dual plungers and struck the speaker man with all the strength I could muster, but it was still no use. They were too weak to use against his whopping scale. I was running out of options and my health was low. I needed to do something, and fast. Without any other weapons or abilities in my arsenal, I had no choice but to resort to using my new shield. With an echoing thud, my buckler clashed against his metallic exterior. Finally, I was able to hurt him. Now, the fight was back on. I dealt one final massive blow, and he froze. He shook his head and looked up at me. Where am I? The Titan Speaker Man's trance was broken. But before I had a chance to celebrate, the sawblade skibbity rose up from behind a nearby building. It began floating towards me, but I was too weak for my fight with the speaker man. Let's go! We cut our losses and retreated back to the base. On days 44 through 46, the Titan Speaker Man and I made it back to the base. The signal jammers at the base got the sawblade skibbity off of our tail for now, so I took this chance to regroup. I started by adding a large section to the base to fit my new massive size. I also made sure to make it a little extra large, just in case I grew any more. Once that was finished, I added a room for the Titan Speaker Man, since it seemed like he would be sticking around for a while. Finally, I added a food source to ensure we would always have something to eat so we would be ready for battle. Uh, how do we eat without mouths? I don't know. With that, my base expansion was complete. I decided to ask the Titan Speaker Man if he had gathered any info on the Skibbity Army. My memory is fuzzy, but I know there is a way to restore the Titan TV to even stronger than before. We just need to retrieve his body. Okay, where's his body? It was taken back to a secret island base. I don't know the exact location. I know! Now that I'm a Titan, I'll fly around and look for it. With that, I took to the skies in search of this secret island base. On days 47 through 50, I was able to locate the island base, and it was crawling with toilets. I found the base, but I'm gonna need some backup. Over. I waited for a response, but there was only static. Looks like they're jamming my radio signal. I'm on my own. Suddenly, my tracker started to beep. Oh, so much for stealth. Intruder, intruder! I was immediately attacked by a swarm of toilet drones. I fought them off using my new powers, and the lesser toilets didn't stand a chance. I took flight, soaring circles around the wave of aerial enemies, evading all of their attacks effortlessly. I fired a burst, yellow balls of light raining down onto the flying foes, making quick work of the drones. But that wasn't where the battle ended. On the ground, the other toilets joined in the fight, eager to avenge their fallen comrades. I flew into the air once more, bombing the enemies from above, unleashing a wave of fire onto the ground. Even with my superior agility and strength, the toilets proved unrelenting. I retreated back to regain some health, but the foes followed suit. They leapt from the pier onto the sandy beach below in pursuit of me. Finally, using my shield to defend myself and my plungers to attack, I was able to finish off the stragglers. Bring out the secret weapon! The ground began to shake, and a massive beast landed in front of me. Wait, is that the TV Titan? That's right, we made your former ally our new weapon. Not again! The cinema man hit me with a heavy blow and I immediately blacked out. On days 51 through 52, I woke up inside of a strange testing facility. I was trapped inside of a cage, and a group of skibbity scientists were experimenting on me. I was paralyzed. Ugh, let me go. Oh no, he's awake. Quickly, deploy the mind control bot. I couldn't do anything to stop them as a little spider robot climbed up and went right inside of my head. Ugh! I went into some sort of trance. I was just a little baby cameraman, and a massive spider skibbity was singing songs inside of my head, giving me a splitting headache. Ugh, get out of my head! I tried to fight back, but the music got louder and louder. Ugh, I don't think I can fight the mind control much longer! On days 53 through 55, I was about to give in, when suddenly the TV woman's voice rang out through my head. Max! You're the last hope for the resistance! Don't let the skibbity toilets control you! She's right! With newfound motivation, I looked up at the skibbity spider. I'm not afraid of you! My power is stronger than your song! I transformed from a baby back into a titan. It smashed apart the spider toilet with my awesome powers. 
After I did that, I snapped out of my trance and the real spider fell to the ground and died. Ha! I did it! My mental fortitude caused a surge of energy to course through me, and I transformed into an upgraded Titan cameraman with 10 more hearts and a massive hammer weapon. No! He broke the mind control! That's right! Now it's my turn to fight back! I used my new hammer to bust out of the cage and sprung into action. On days 56 through 58, I was wreaking havoc on the Skibbity Lab. After smashing everything up and flushing a few toilets, I was able to escape the facility. As I was adding distance between me and the facility, the Sawblade Skibbity emerged. You're not going to make it out of here alive. Come at me, you oversized weed whacker! While I would easily overpower the Sawblade Skibbity in strength, what he lacked in that department, he made up for tenfold in speed. The foe was gliding circles around me at a pace so rapid that not only could he evade all of my attacks, but also I could barely even keep my eyes on him in the first place. I swung my hammer and fired my ranged abilities in an attempt to predict his movements, but it was to no avail. The Sawblade Skibbity just kept darting around me, dodging my attacks effortlessly and only moving in close to slice into me with his sharp razor edges. I knew I couldn't endure his carving for much longer or I would surely bleed out. Finally, with one massive swing from my hammer, I was able to turn the tables. With that monumental hit, the Sawblade Skibbity went down and I emerged from the battle victorious. But my victory was short-lived as the Cinema Man landed in front of me and charged into attack. I attempted to hold him back by unleashing a powerful blast of lasers, but he retaliated with an attack of his own, emitting an ear-piercingly high-pitched sonic boom at a volume so loud that I felt my eardrums shudder. The sheer force of Cinema Man's attack sent me stumbling backwards, disoriented from the pain. With my senses momentarily compromised, I tried to fire another laser, but it was no use. Even as the buildings around me crumbled from the impact of the detonation, the Cinema Man was too strong. My blast had only momentarily slowed him down, and now he was closing in for another strike. Suddenly, though, the foe stopped his assault. Before I could assess the situation, the adversary took advantage of my confusion to stun me with his screen. I couldn't fight back. I needed to retreat before the Cinema Man delivered the finishing blow. I flew off further into the city, but the Cinema Man was right on my tail. We continued on this pattern of stunning and withdrawing, but I was quickly losing stamina. I had no choice but to stand my ground and fight. With all of my might, I unleashed the full extent of my force, releasing powerful blasts and swinging hammer at the foe but he remained undeterred, showing no signs of defeat. I wasn't strong enough to beat their new titan. I was gonna lose. Just when I thought it was all over, Speaker Man appeared. He stunned the Cinema Man with his sonic boom, giving me an opportunity to escape. On days 59 through 61, I regroup with the TV woman at the base. The Sawblade Skibbity is defeated, but the TV Titan has been converted into an evil Cinema Man. Whoa. Thanks for the update. Good work. I decided it was time to do some more base expansion, so I started by reinforcing security measures around the base, making sure we were safe from Skibbity intruders. On top of cameras being placed everywhere, I added a laser wall and two sentry towers manned by helpful TV men. Once that was finished, I added a lab for doing small repairs and projects. This would also serve as a medical center for all my TV and speaker allies. Finally, I finished the meeting room area where we could discuss future plans of attack. Once that was finished, we proceeded to discuss plans. If the Skibbities have control over the upgraded TV Titan, then things are looking even more grim for our cause. What are we gonna do? We have to increase our own numbers, infiltrate one of their bases, and abduct their men. I have an experiment that will make us even stronger. On days 62 through 64, I headed to the location that the TV woman gave me to find a bunch of smaller skibbity toilets gathered in a yard. This is the perfect time to strike. I took my chance and ambushed the horde of toilets. I stunned them with my attacks and used the opening to trap them inside of a cage. I quickly built as fast as I could, and in a matter of moments, they had nowhere to run. Time to take these guys to the TV woman. Not so fast. Just then, a horrible three-headed skibbity toilet appeared before me. They were massive, and I knew that they would be tough to face. You're going to release our men. Why should I do that? Because we'll tear you apart with all three of our heads. You'll be reduced to rubble. Yeah, right. I'll flush you all down at once. I charged full speed at the toilet, ready to do anything to complete my mission. On days 65 through 67, I was fighting off the three-headed skibbity toilet. They were incredibly strong. It was as if I was fighting three massive toilets at once, but I had to win this battle if the cameras were gonna stand a chance. I harnessed all of my power and unleashed a 
a massive beam of lasers towards the foe. Alas, his enormous scale meant that his defenses were near impenetrable. I attempted to make use of his strategy to land some blows on him myself, but focusing on one head created an opening for the other two to attack me. I withdrew back, creating space between the two of us so I could devise a plan. But the three-headed skibbity toilet was too quick-witted, seizing the opportunity to summon helicopter minions to assist him. Knowing his underlings couldn't harm me, I focused all of my attention on the main enemy. However, even with all of my powers, they were tough to beat. It was anyone's game. Take this. I waited for an opening and blasted into one of the heads full force. Unfortunately for me, the three-headed skibbity toilet continued to fight like nothing had happened. What's going on? That was a direct hit. You have to eat all of us at once, you doofus. Time for us to end this. The three-headed skibbity continued their onslaught and moved around swiftly to avoid my attacks. I was getting low on health, but I just needed to wait for the right moment to strike. I endured the battle until finally I saw all three heads were lined up. Now! I blasted through all three of the heads at once, vaporizing the toilet where it stood. No! The three-headed toilet died, leaving nothing but dust in its wake. Now that he's out of the way, I better get these guys back to the base before my tracker attracts more toilets. On days 68 through 71, I returned to the base with the toilets. The whole way, they wouldn't stop singing their song, and it was giving me a massive headache. Please, no more skibbity. Don't worry, I'll take it from here. Thank you. She began tinkering with them, and about a day later, she came up to me with some new friends. Ta-da! She had transformed the skibbity toilets into camera toilets. They were now an elite team of powerful allies that we could use in combat. Whoa, you're amazing! Aw, uh, thanks. It's not much, but I've always been pretty handy when it came to science experiments. Are you kidding? You're brilliant! I'm so lucky to have someone like you as my ally. Of course. I'll do anything to make sure the skibbity toilets lose this war. Suddenly, my walkie-talkie went off. Max, come in, Max. We need backup at the west end of town. Time to test these guys out. On days 72 through 74, I arrived at the battlefield to find the large TV man fighting off a horde of skibbity toilets. Come forth, my army! My crew of camera toilets jumped into the fray. They were much more powerful than the previous cameramen, and they fought off the lesser toilet drones with ease. Even with their increased strength, the camera toilets weren't fighting alone. I joined into the fray, slamming my massive hammer down onto the ground beneath me, sending the enemy skibbity toilets flying back. Our opponents stood no chance against my superior army and abilities. As I unleashed a final blast of embers from my flamethrower, most of the porcelain foes crumbled to dust as they were scorched by the fire below. Things were looking really good for our team in this battle, until out of nowhere, the cinema man arrived. Time to take you down! With renewed determination, I charged into battle to fight the cinema man head on. Laser beams and flamethrowers erupted from my massive chest, searing through the air towards him. However, the foe retaliated with a powerful screen projection engulfing my vision in a blinding red hue, momentarily stunning me. Reacting swiftly, I raised my immense shield before me, interposing it between us to block the cinema man's incoming attacks and sending him recoiling back. Seizing the opportunity, I swung my colossal hammer with a thunderous force, sending shockwaves through the ground as it connected with his towering frame. Undeterred, Cinema Man retaliated with a colossal punch, shaking the very foundation of the city and sending debris flying in all directions. As the epic confrontation unfolded, the city's buildings trembled, and the skyline bore the scars of the relentless battle between two titans, leaving a trail of destruction in our wake. But even still, the Cinema Man was way too powerful for me. I was at low health, and I was gonna die! On days 75 through 76, I was about to be killed by the Cinema Man, when out of nowhere, the TV woman intervened. Leave him alone! Her screen lit up orange and the massive titan was set on fire. Yeah, you'll pay for that. He landed a heavy blow onto the TV woman, but she held on for dear life and drew his fire away from me. Run, TV woman! No, I'm going to protect you! She distracted the cinema man for me as best she could, but the beast didn't give up. She'd attach her head to distract him, but it didn't matter. With one final blow, the cinema man killed her where she stood. No! I felt rage swell up in my chest. I wanted to fight the cinema man and make him pay, but the large TV man stopped me. Running in now is a death sentence. Let's get out of here. But... You won't do the TV woman any favors dead. We have to face him once we're ready. I didn't want to admit it, but the large TV was right. The two of us fled with our lives intact, and I swore that the skibbity toilets would pay for all of the lives they had ended. On days 77 to 78, I returned to the base with a large TV man and my camera toilet forces. I was feeling really upset about what had happened. TV Woman didn't deserve any of that. 
There was nothing I could do about it right now though, so I decided to distract myself with a bit of building. Now that I had camera toilets, I had to make a proper place for them to stay. On a new floor above the meeting room, I built a loft with six bunk beds and chests for their belongings. Then, I added a few extra furnishings for visual interest. Since the large TV man would be staying with me too, he needed his area as well. This was shaping up to be a big household. I built him a giant structure that was shaped and decorated to look like a TV screen. Inside, I made him a nice bedroom with a large and comfy bed and a room full of TVs so he could relax while watching them. With those two places complete, I had one more thing to do. I had to honor TV Woman. I figured the best way to do that was to create a memorial for her. I built a statue of her head, then made sure to place a lot of torches and decorations of her favorite things around it. I wish she could have seen it. This war had just gotten personal. I was eager to take down the Cinema Man and the Skibbity Army as soon as possible. As I planned our next move, the large TV man came up to me. How are you holding up? This war needs to end. Too many innocent people are losing their lives. I have an upgrade that could help make you stronger, but it's dangerous to install. You could possibly die. I don't care. If it'll make me stronger, then I have to try. On days 79 to 80, I was back at the lab where I received my previous upgrades. The large TV man began to upgrade me. Okay, hold still. Just like it did before, my health began to sap, getting lower and lower. I began to drift in and out of consciousness. In my mind's eye, I saw flashes of the TV woman. I remembered all of the good times we had and all of the battles we had faced together. She was my best friend, and the cinema man had taken her away from me. I knew at that moment I couldn't give up. I hung on to life for her. And there we are. Upgrade successful. I feel tougher. I came back to reality, now with 10 more hearts and even more durability than before with Titan armor. Suddenly, my tracking device began to beep wildly. The area flooded with skibbity armed forces, but they weren't ready for what was about to hit them. Take this! I started blasting through the toilet army using my new strength. The goons stood no chance against my giant hammer and my increased might. With one ferocious swing of my weapon, I came crushing down onto the foes with the full extent of my power, sending all the skibbity toilets flying backwards from the sheer magnitude of my force. However, the battle wouldn't be that easy. Not only were there normal skibbity toilet minions, but there were larger spider skibbity toilets as well, mightier and remarkably elusive compared to the ordinary ones, giving them the advantage of surprise, making it challenging for me to land my attacks or to counter theirs. The toilet forces were overwhelming me and I couldn't regain the advantage. But just then, TV Man ran over and joined the fight. With his help, we were able to defeat the nearby enemies, but the battle still wasn't over. Some of the minions were ganging up on the TV scientists. I knew I had to save them, so I rushed into the fray once more. Using all of my abilities, I was able to destroy the last of the toilets and rescue my allies. After a long battle, I managed to take out the entire swarm of toilets. That upgrade really did the trick. Just then, I spotted a note on the ground and picked it up. We are working on our secret weapon just west of here. Soon enough, those cameramen won't know what hit them. It seems like they're working on something big. I better go check it out. On days 81 through 82, I arrived at the secret base on the note. There, two skibbity toilets were performing maintenance on the cinema man. What are they talking about? I made sure I wouldn't be seen in my hiding spot and listened in on the enemy to see what intel I could gather. How's the upgrade coming along? Excellent. Soon the Cinema Man will be flawless. But isn't he already the strongest Titan we've ever seen? Yes, but the Cinema Man has one problem. He can't track Max from the safety of his base. But that won't be a problem anymore once this upgrade is done. What does it do? The upgrade will allow him to track Max through anything, even whatever those pesky cameras are using to scramble his signals. What does that mean? The Cinema Man will be able to track Max's every move without any interference. Yes, with that blasted titan out of the way, everyone will be forced to surrender. Oh no, I can't let that happen. I took to the skies. I had to figure out a way to remove my tracking device ASAP. On days 83 through 84, I returned back to the base to talk with the large TV man about removing my tracking device. The procedure is delicate, but I think I can do it. I'm gonna need a few things though. I'm willing to do anything. Let's get this tracking device off of me. The large TV man handed me a list and I set off to search for the three missing parts he would need. I started in a junkyard to see what sorts of scraps were laying around. It was just my luck that the reinforced saw blade was lying in the rubble. Next, I checked the ocean for a Titan wrench. There was a lot of different trash, but I found it eventually. Only one more to go. I returned to the shore and checked the list only to realize that the final item I needed was a skibbity toilet flushing handle. I have to go inside of a base to find that. I never fit inside. I have an idea. The large TV man walked up to me. What are you doing here? I had a feeling you might need my help. Hold still. The TV man tossed a mysterious splash potion onto me. My head began to spin around. 
Ugh, I don't feel so good. Just then, I shrank down into a miniature Titan cameraman. This will let you sneak around, but you're weakened in this state. Be careful. Time to get that last part. On days 85 through 86, I arrived at a skibbity toilet facility and began my infiltration mission. Time to get that last part. I stealthed around the facility as a miniature cameraman Titan. The halls were crawling with skibbity guards, so I had to be careful not to get spotted. I jumped from cover to cover, having a few close calls. Luckily, I was getting through the facility thanks to the potion. This small size is really coming in handy. After a while, I made it to a lab where a strange skibbity toilet was being experimented on. At the end of the other room was the handle I was seeking. That guy looks like bad news. I better be careful. I began to stealth my way closer and closer towards the final part, but everything went south when my tracker began to beep wildly. The toilet abomination turned its attention towards me. Nobody intrudes in my room and gets away with it. It jumped at me full speed and I braced myself. On days 87 through 88, I was facing off with the mod skibbity toilet. I unleashed my full extent of my power onto the brute, harnessing all of my energy to release my monster mental flamethrower and laser beam abilities. The laboratory stood no chance against my destruction, but the modded skibbity toilet remained unscathed despite enduring the full extent of my blasts. As a result of my decreased size, my power had also taken a substantial hit and my attacks were no longer strong enough to damage the foe. I had no choice but to retreat, taking advantage of the tight corridors of the lab to put some distance between myself and the enemy. But I couldn't run forever. The toilet was quick, and his blades were extremely sharp, slicing into my mechanical exterior like butter and dealing massive damage. I was too powerless to retaliate. I was a sitting duck. I fought with everything I had, but in my shrunken state, I was no match for the massive toilet. One hit too many from his saw blades would have killed me. I can't keep this up. I better get out of here. I used my jetpack to fly in after the part and managed to grab it. Afterwards, I hightailed it towards the exit. You're not getting away from me. The skibbity toilet ran after me with its robotic spider legs. It was quick on its feet, and I didn't think I was going to make it out alive. Luckily, I made it to the exit and took to the skies, narrowly avoiding the toilet's wrath. I'll find you and kill you. Just you wait. On days 89 through 90, I made it back to the lab and returned to normal size. There, the large TV man was already waiting for me. I finally got the last part. I'm ready. Not wasting time, I threw him the three parts. Great work. Let's remove this device. The large TV man began to get to work. The procedure was delicate, and one wrong move would have been fatal. Just need to. Oops. The large TV man's hand slipped, and I took massive damage. Ouch. Be careful. After a bit of tinkering, the TV man successfully removed the tracking device from me. It was a success. You're a free man, Max. Just then, the alarm started blaring in the lab. I rushed to the surface to discover that the modded skibbity toilet had chased me there. Won't you give up? Not until you're dead. The machinery on the modded skibbity toilet started clanking and whirring, and he grew three times larger. He lunged at me with his saw blade spinning. Luckily for me, I was back to my full size now. It was time for a fair fight. I unleashed a devastating barrage of my abilities, and this time they effortlessly shattered through his formidable defenses, inflicting substantial damage upon the foe. But a fair fight it would not be. I thought I had seen the full extent of the modded Skibbity Toilet's powers, but it seemed that with his increased size, he also gained an increased arsenal of attacks. To my surprise, the brute sent forth a bombardment of missiles and they were aimed right for me. The projectiles collided into me and detonated with a deafening boom, sending me stumbling back. As the smoke cleared, I found myself face to face with the strongest opposition I had countered who was completely undeterred by my earlier assault. Its modified form seemed nearly indestructible, and I knew I had to dig deep to match its newfound power. I pushed myself beyond my limits, summoning every ounce of strength and ingenuity within me to stay in the fight. With my confidence restored, I released the full extent of my powers onto the foe. Bursts of lasers and flames soared through the air, and my hammer swung down valiantly onto the toilet. The battle was close, but I managed to pull ahead. I took out the modded skibbity once and for all. Upon his death, he dropped a note. The cinema man is growing stronger than ever before. Soon we will use him to unleash an attack that will wipe out the camera forces and win the war for the skibbity toilets. We're running out of time. I have to end this soon. On days 91 through 92, I returned to my base to do a bit of expanding. I started by adding a storage room to hold all the weapons we could use in battle. We were going to need a lot if we wanted to stand a chance. Next, I added a party floor for everyone to 
to unwind, complete with a dance floor. My men were hard at work, but that didn't mean they couldn't get their minds off things for a while. Let's test this place out. Once I was done, I hosted a party. Everyone danced to some good music and had a well-deserved break. They were so happy that one of my men came up to me. Thanks for the rest and relaxation, Max. Take this. He handed me a potion of strength and went on his way. Just then, the large TV man walked up to me. I have some important news. I'm detecting a familiar signal, but I can't place my finger on what. That sounds fishy. I'll investigate. I took to the skies, unsure of what would be waiting for me. On days 93 through 94, I arrived at the source of the signal to discover the TV woman having hacked into a power line. I couldn't believe my eyes. TV woman? Is it really you? I flew up towards her, but she didn't respond. Suddenly, she turned around and attacked me with her fire attack. Ah! The TV woman went at me with everything she had. I wasn't sure what was going on, but something terrible had happened to her. I desperately tried to plead with her while she continued attacking me with all of her fire powers. She even used the electrical grid to zap me with lightning. I could have fought back, but I didn't want to hurt her. Please snap out of it! This went on until I was getting low on health. One more hit from her would finish me. Enough! I landed one blow on the TV woman, causing her head to fall to the ground. After a few moments, her head returned to her body and she seemed to return to normal. Oh, my head. Max, is that you? Yes, it's me! I'm so sorry. The toilets repaired me and turned me against you. They could still be close by. Let's talk somewhere else. On days 95 through 96, I returned back to the base with the TV woman. I wanted to catch up with her and make sure everything was okay. I'm so glad to see you again. Are you feeling all right now? My head's a little fuzzy, but I'm good. Thank you for saving me, Max. Of course. Do you remember anything from your time under their control? It's a bit of a blur, but I do remember where they're holding the cinema man. I'm gonna show him a piece of my mind. Oh, no way. Going there as you are now would be a death sentence. You need one more upgrade if you think you're gonna be able to take him on. The TV woman handed me a map. This will lead you to a skibbity toilet's weapon storage. Rate it for all it's worth. Thanks. Time to get some more firepower. On days 97 through 98, I arrived at the location on my map to discover a skibbity toilet weapons shed. The place was full of countless different guns and swords, all mine for the taking. Don't mind if I do. I began to loot the shed for all it was worth, but I got so caught up in the different gadgets that I didn't hear something sneak up from behind me. I turned around and discovered a massive armored skibbity toilet behind me. Its weapons were pointed out and ready to fire. Drop your weapons. No way. I'm taking these for the cameraman. Suit yourself. The armored skibbity launches missiles at me and the two of us duked it out. The enemy unleashed a barrage of missiles, but with a swift raise of my shield, I deflected each one. The flames bouncing off of my buckler and raining onto the ground below. Feeling the rush of adrenaline, I took to the skies, leaving the ground beneath me. As the gargantuan foe pursued me in the air, I realized what he had in defense he severely lacked in speed, and I was able to easily fly circles around the colossal toilet. My heart pounded with excitement as I gracefully dodged its attacks. Seizing the opportunity, the toilet extended its long neck and reached out to strike me. The battlefield erupted in a fiery clash of force, tearing through the one serene area. As the dust settled and flames raged, I locked eyes with the armored toilet, the determination to emerge victorious shining brightly in my gaze. I blasted at him with everything I had, dwindling down his health bit by bit. After a fierce battle, I finally managed to defeat the armored toilet. The weapons are mine. I need to hurry back and prepare for the final battle. On day 99, I returned to the base and began to do my final experience before my face off with the cinema man. I filled my storage room with all of the new weapons I gathered and even handed out some of them to my troops to wield in battle. We won't let you down, sir. I know you won't. Let's win this war for all the cameramen, TVs, and speakers that have fallen to the toilet's might. After I finished, the TV woman walked up to me and asked me to come with her. She took me to her lab and began to work on one final upgrade. Once she was done, I gained five additional hearts, as well as a bunch of guns to use in battle, including a built-in rocket launcher. At long last, I think you're finally ready. Are you sure? I can't fail this time. You won't. You're the strongest person I know, Max. I believe in you. You're right. I have to believe in myself. Thank you. Time to face the cinema man. On day 100, I arrived following the location the TV woman gave me to find the final whereabouts of the cinema man and the toilet army. Surrender, skibbity toilets. This ends here. You really think we'll give it to you? We're armed with the strongest weapon in the world. That doesn't matter. I'm strong too. And I'm going to show you what happens when you take the lives of innocent people. Tough talk for an oversized camera. I'll show you why we have control over the cinema man. And you don't. 
The toilet sent the cinema man on me and I engage in the final battle. The enemy forces charging forward, I raise my shield. The cinema man immediately blasted me with new upgraded powers. I did my best to block and endure them. He spat out intense hot blue fire, even catching some of his own toilet men ablaze. I struck back with my hammer, doing massive damage and sending the toilet minions flying. Anytime I gained my distance, cinema man would unleash an onslaught of sonic booms from his speakers. I did my best to block it with my shields, but the attack echoed all around me. I used my own flamethrower to try and slow him down, but he seemed unfazed. Eventually, I sent out my new rockets to blast him back. We duked it out with powers flying in every direction. He struck with his mighty fist as I swung down my massive hammer. I had to constantly eat to refuel my health, but I could tell I was wearing him down too. I drank the strength potion I received earlier. Toilets were sent flying as us titans clashed. The ground soon became a sea of fire and rubble. The cinema man's power was unlike anything else I had faced on my entire journey, but I was ready to take on anything. I fought him with everything I had in my arsenal to use. I fired the various guns I gained at the TV Titan until I was all out of ammo. Cinema Man shrugged off the metal shells, pelting his massive body. But I wasn't going to walk this far just to fall here. I was getting low in health, but I knew there was one way I could turn this around. I blasted him with my strongest laser and missiles all at once, causing the mind-controlling toilet on him to go flying. I got you now! I smashed the little spider, and the Cinema Man regained control of his body. What happened? No time to explain! End this! The Cinema Man turned his weapons onto the toilet army and blasted them into oblivion. Cinema Man unleashed rocket after rocket, and nothing was left but smoke and fire. The war was won in the name of the cameraman! Don't forget to download Honkai Impact 3rd using the link in the description and use code REBIRTH for exclusive rewards. Thanks Honkai Impact 3rd for sponsoring the video.